Hello there, it's Moira MacDonald. Uh, this is take two. Take one ended with, as soon as I said hello, it's Moira, and before I even got MacDonald out, Chip barked at a squirrel, and everybody had to charge out the door. So, uh, Chip and Daisy, who are the worst when it comes to watching for squirrels, are now out in the hall, so that they can bark at the front window, and it's me and Timmy in the back. Um, Today, if you're still with me in this wee series um, of layering, uh, we're still on stamps, I'm afraid. Uh, hopefully, folk find it uh, interesting in some respects. Um, can I, we're going to play cheats game and we're going to play at spot colouring along with our layering. So, um, what I'll do first of all is, I shall introduce... Uh, what we're going to, actually I should have got a paper towel or something, um, I'm going to do a bit of spot colouring on a watercolour card that I'm going to use for this tag. Bear with me, I'm going to go and get a tissue and I knew I would forget something. Uh, right, so we're going to do a bit of spot colouring as well as our layering and it will involve some of the stuff that I covered yesterday uh, plus obviously introducing uh, a wee bit of difference. Now, the stamp, I'm the stamp I'm going to use to do my main image is a Crafty Individual stamp. <clears throat> they have a lot of really... They're, they're an online company, craftyindividuals.co.uk they have some really, really nice um, vintage style stamps. My only qualm with them is that they sell them without the foam backing. So you basically get the red rubber and it's up to yourself to... They sell the grey uh, sort of foam backing. So you can buy it, uh, stick it to your stamp and then cut your stamp out. Uh, but... Uh, as you can see, I don't, ma I didn't make a great job of cutting it out because it's very, very, very sticky and it tends to stick to your scissors. I know Tim Holtz does a set of scissors that are, um, I don't think, are meant to stick to things. I don't have a set of them, or I should did. Uh, so I shall perhaps at some point in the future invest in them uh, because obviously it would be really useful. Now. What I'm going to do here is, this is going to be my Cheats Game 1, I'm going to introduce a stamping platform. Now, there, there was a law, not a law, there was a legal, excuse me, a legal issue, oh, there's Daisy barking at the window, a legal issue recently, the Misty, which is made by a, a company called, I think, My Sweet Petunia, had um, taken Hampton Arts, who made this one that I've got, and Tim Holtz and Tonic uh, to court because they basically copied her um, patent or copyright or whatever. Uh, and it, I mean, it was, to be fair, that what they were selling was pretty much very similar. This is really similar to the Misty because obviously the only difference being is blue around the side and the Misty's pink. Um, but I bought mines before the court case. I believe this is no longer for sale, the blue one by Hampton Arts. And you can still, as far as I'm aware, get the Tonic Tim Holtz one in Europe, but you can't get it in the States or anywhere in North America. Um, so, uh, and I think there's now a legal action going against um, Stampin' Up for the Stamparatus, which works in pretty much the same principle. Whether or not that'll be successful is obviously up for grabs, and I don't know if the Stamparatus has stopped being sold, I've no idea. Um, so if you're looking for a stamp, stamping platform, um, probably the Misty is the one you're going to have to go for if you're in the States. Uh, right, so, make sure I've got my stamp the right way up. What we're going to do first of all is we're going to stamp our main image, which I plan ultimately, I'm trying to make sure I can get it kind of straight, uh, I'm going to ultimately do a bit of spot watercolouring on this. Uh, so that it stands out from the rest of the layers on the stamp. Uh, to do watercolouring, um, now about, bear in mind I am not by any stretch of the imagination great when it comes to things like colouring in. 
uh, I tend to do watercolour because I don't have any Copics, which are alcohol ink. They're very, very expensive. I bought some alcohol ink pens recently. I think it was... Uh, I can't remember what they're called, but they're, they're, they're basically they were British um, and I bought them because obviously they were a considerably less expensive than the Copics, but I, I just couldn't get to grips with them. I found them personally a wee, a wee bit thick for me because, um, like I say, I'm not that good, so I, <laughs> I really need something to colour in for me. Um, so it didn't work for me. But that doesn't mean to say that they were near goodbye. Um, but there you go. They just they were near for me. Right. So anyway, we'll do this. And I don't see. Do you know what? Sometimes you look at things and you think, is that just a rotten copy, or is that the way the stamp is? But I think, to be honest, that's the way the stamp is. Let's have a look at the. No, it's better quality on the picture, so I think we'll go over it again. See, again, the problem with this particular watercolour, this is what you call a uh, cold pressed watercolour paper, which means it's textured. Um, so it's no, it's no flat. Um, and that in itself can sometimes cause you wee bits of bother when you're stamping, because your stamped image might not come up as well as you think it should. And it's still not coming up, but I think it's going to have to do this. So, that'll do me. Uh, I also want to stamp on this. So I'll move that now. And bring this in. Don't want to, don't want to waste a lot of this if I can avoid it, because obviously can use the rest. Right, that'll do me. Um, so this is my masking paper again, which I'm going to use today. Uh, so I stamp up my image. Anyway, I, th I think I was explaining and I kind of got stopped, I did get distracted. Diversifying is fine for water colouring but not for Copic colouring if you're using alcohol markers to do your colouring. Um, if you want to do your Copic colouring what you get is um, Memento which is those ones. I'm going to be using them for my background stamp because I'm not planning on colouring that. Right that'll do me in my main stamp front so I can give that a clean with my baby wipe. And put that away. Uh, where did I get it? Here it is. This is my some of my um, crafty individual stamps. That came as a set of two kind of thistles and post stamp, and I've also got some. It's like birds in a tree, or you know, a couple of branches and whatever, and some wee birds. They don't look very attractive because they don't. You know the way they the way they're prepared. Um, plus, obviously, when you introduce me cutting them out uh, and adding the sticky thing to it, it's I'm not the best. Right now, I want to cut out this main image because it's going to have to mask what I just stamped on my. main picture there. There we go, that does. And we'll bring that back in. Now, the problem I'm going to have here is, I don't think I can actually hold that down because what I'm going to do is uh, for my other thing, what do you call it? My, this is going to be my cheats game version of how to stamp with layers. So, 
We'll put that on top. Oops, for a minute. There we go, that'll do for us. Now, uh, cheats game, I'm going to use a great big stamp that I got from Stampin' Up! and it's called Postscript. And it will provide all of my layers and if you have a look at that you'll see what I mean because obviously what it gives you is it gives you things that are already layered over one another so they'll just appear like a background. Now, ordinarily I would be able to hold that down with my little magnets but I can't because of the size of this particular stamp so uh, we're going to have to hope that it stamps quite well in the first go and there's no guarantee that that'll happen but we'll do our best. Now I am just going to let me think. Do you know what I think I will do is I'll actually use green to do this, uh, a green ink. And like I say, I could use that uh, memento one because I'm not going to be watercolour in this aspect of it. But it's a wee tiny ink. Uh, I think they call them dewdrops. A little kind of like dewdrop of ink and it will take me forever. So I'm going to use a Stampin' Up! pad to stamp it with because obviously I can put a lot more ink on. So the colour is Old Olive. Again, not that it really matters, it's just I wanted to use a green shade. And I'm taking the ink to the stamp. Trying to make sure that I at least get the ink on the bits that's going to be going over the tag because I can't in this particular instance I'm not going to be able to lift it up and put it back down again it's going to have to stamp right the first time right, I think that'll do us still quite stiff, so it's quite a new ink pad. Right, are we ready? Let's layer. So there we go. Oh, press down and hopefully get as good a quality copy as we can because I can't lift it and go over it again. It'll need, it'll need to do and you just don't know till you lift it. Not almost certainly lift the tag with a, the actual stamp. Right, here goes. Mm, that didn't but it's okay. It uh, looks like a reasonable enough quality. So we shall lift that out and we shall clean this. as best we can. There are some marks on this because you can't, with the best will in the world, no matter how much I try to tidy things, there's always um, there's always a degree of ink that remains and stains stuff for you. And you know me, I just don't like things getting spoiled. I think the problem is money's precious and I know these things aren't cheap so I don't want to um, spend my money and then ruin something that I've spent cash on. I like my stuff to last the the pace. Right. Put that away. And that is for the time being as done with this. So we can put this away as well. Away the green stamping up pad because I don't want to be using that again just now. And we can consider doing our wee bit of spot colour. 
So we need to take our mask off. And one of my friends asked me yesterday about the mask and if it can be reused. Yes, it can. It does have a limited life um, because each time it gets covered with ink on the top, it is on the paper, albeit paper with a kind of gluey background. Um, and ultimately, it, it will end up kind of waterlogged. Um, and in that respect, it's, it's no use to you after a wee while. But you can. You can use it again if you want to stamp that particular stamp again. Right, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to colour in uh, my wee thistle. And I'm going to use for that, I've got these um, Derwent Inktense pencils, uh, that are watercolour pencils. I bought a set of 12 simply because it was all I could afford at the time. I subsequently managed to get a second hand set of... Um, the, prior to ink tents being coming out, there was another set of pencils that they did. Uh, and I bought them second hand, like I said. Um, and they're, they, you know, they do for me because I'm not, I'm not brilliant when it comes to this kind of thing. Timmy's growling at the window. And I'm just going to ignore him until he barks, because hopefully he won't, but you never know. I mean, he could be growling at anything. You never know with him. Could be a falling leaf, for all I know. Let's introduce water with get one of these wee brushes that um, you fill up with water. And I basically just need to kind of go over the bits I've done the pencil on and it'll add it'll turn it to watercolour um, paint. I mean, what's it done? I'm not talking because um, so you want to concentrate? <laughs> you can always tell I'm concentrating because I'm quite quiet. Right, uh, clean that with the green. Um, I might add a wee bit more to that, we'll judge in a minute. But I want to put my colour in for my top of my thistles.
think that's that. Now what I would quite like to do is maybe go round it. Um, so bear with me and I'll... I think I'll actually go round it with the pink colour to match in with the... the top of the thistles. I think this is actually, they gave, you can tell that these were uh, done at a point when they decided, these pencils were done at a point when they decided that there was a market for folk who maybe weren't necessarily artists, but that liked things like colouring in because they gave these names. Their first sets, the, the earlier ones that I bought, um, just have numbers. And you know what it's like, women in particular really like pretty names. So this is fuchsia, I think, yeah. This is fuchsia. Whereas in the other set it would be 0700. Good old 0700. It's a lovely colour. When I um, first bought stamps, when I first kind of get into making cards, um, I, I, apart from the fact that I wasn't very good at stamping, um, because I, I think no matter what anybody tells you, it, it does, it, it needs a wee bit, there is a learning curve, let's just put it like that. Uh, I mean, it's not a major steep one, um, but I'll, I'll openly admit, it's only on reflection that I realised the quality of the stamps I was using um, was pretty poor. Stamps have improved. Now, I mean, I'm talking probably at least uh, 20 years ago that I first started. Um, stamps have inc uh, improved considerably in terms of quality. Um, so, you know, it's... Uh, there's there's much better stamps out there than there were when I first started. Right, that will do us for the colouring in. Now, other than that, it's on. Um, what do you call it? It's on watercolour paper, and I'm not doing any fancy colouring this time. I'm just going to. Ground it with your friend and mine, Distress Ink, in Vintage Photo. This is the original Vintage Photo ink pad I bought, and I have probably had it at least 15 years. I have, um, I bought the re-inker, and I have re-inked that, um, and it's um, still going strong. Now when I'm doing my colouring here with the vintage photo, I don't, in this particular instance, I don't want to hit my stamped focal point. Not for any reason other than I want the colours on it to speak for them themselves and be the focus of the stamp. So I want everything else to kind of blend in round about it and not be screaming, you know, for, for the rest of the the layering, if you like, the cheeks layering in this instance, to just blend in. Right, that'll do me. Although I could, uh, wait a minute, could make the edges a bit darker. And what I'll do is I shall 
hopefully find my my wee tag and do my corners Now that I've done them, I can go over those wee bits at the end. And that's, that, right, the, the way the sunlight's hitting it, I don't know if you're going to see it very well, but that's, uh, that's us. Can you see that? Okay. Uh, so we've got our spot colouring, we've got our false layering in the background there because we used a big stamp. So remember, bear in mind that it's possible to do that yeah. as well, to use a, a kind of one-off big stamp. Right. Next, um, what I'm actually going to do this time is, again, something that uh, in some respects I've done in the past. It is the Tim Holtz um, stamps of tickets. And these are, the, the reason I want to use these is the good thing about them is uh, they're all rectangular. So it's well, I mean, there's a slight variation in that, but it's relatively easy to ensure that you can cut around it, <laughs> you know. So call me, call me old-fashioned, but I'm going to take the lazy view of this one. So we'll get this lined up. Right, so I've had my lunch and now I'm back to try and stamp something else. Um, on this occasion, I'm going to try and apply a flake and glitter glue to um, a stamp and put some gilding flakes on an image and then do some layering round about it. So I put a bit of uh, indigo blue flitter glue onto my sponge. This is the stamp I'm going to be using. It's a, a clock. So I'm just going to ink it up Try and figure out where 12 is and apply it to my card. And peel it off and I'm going to stamp it again. Put another wee bit of glue in. It is exceptionally um, sticky glue. That's the only thing I would say about it. And you do need to wash your um, stamp right away. It says, and I'll apply. Wait a minute, try and make sure I've got 12 to the top. Apply it there. And again, peel off. I'll just go and throw this in the sink. Give me two seconds and I'll be back with you. Now we're going to try and apply gilding flakes. Not sure about that first one. Don't think that's going to show up very well, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> uh, second one I think might be a little bit better when I look. Now the golden flakes are a mixture of colours uh, of gold, rose gold, and there's a green one as well. I got these, I have no idea what the colour mixture is called. I bought it on eBay second hand, as you do, or at least as I do. Uh, when you've applied it to wherever you're gluing, you then go over it with a piece of Ranger's rubbing buff. Yeah, the first one wasn't a great impression, but that's okay. You can still accept it as a kind of distressed copy of what we're doing. Ideally you don't sneeze when you're doing this, or cold. Right, 
Oops. Because it goes everywhere, it really does. I'm trying to get as much of it out of the way as I can. And I'll vacuum around about it later. I'm going to put this in the sink as well. A wee bit of sponge. Look at our uh, tag. Top stamping isn't, uh, it's not particularly impressive, but that's okay. We can work round about that. Uh, I've cut out a couple of masks again and we'll apply them if I can get backing paper off. You know what? I'll not bother with that top one. Where's my paper trimmer? I think we'll just get rid of that. Because it looks. Oh, sorry. Quite poor. Still use the bottom one. Right, so with the, we've got our mask, and basically what we want to do is where's my My ink this time is uh, VersaFine Clear. I'm not doing any um, colour or anything. I just felt it was uh, it was quite a nice kind of brown tone to match in. Now it's a polymer stamp, so it's uh, it's going to need to be. I don't know, I want to take that off in a second. I want to just move it down slightly. Uh, I'm going to stamp it off. It's a brown shade and it's quite intense. Um, so I'm going to stamp it off and I'm basically just going to fill out the background here with it. Uh, where's the ink again? Oh, there it is. Stamp it off. Stamp it off twice actually. And going round my image. Just filling it in with text, first of all, before I do anything else. That'll do me. Um, clean my text still. Right, let's see what else we've got here that we can add to this.
thankful all aunt as a coin. And since I've used um, the kind of brown shade, I want to go with uh, I've got something called Peanut Brittle, which is a kind of it's a sandy brown shade. It's a memento ink. Might be a wee bit intense still, so let's stamp it off first of all and I'll see what it looks like. It should be okay. And we'll just overlap that over the text. That's fine, you can barely see that actually. So I think the next time I'll do it down here and I won't stamp off. That's good. And where did it come from? There it is. Um some ticket stamps. No, I don't like them. They're not what I'm looking for. One here that says Paris. We'll use that. In fact, I might do that at the top because that one that I did earlier, it's really not very intense. So, put that there. And there. Right, and we shall remove our mask and see how it looks. There you go, quite happy with that. So you've got a, hold on, in fact I'll come behind the camera so I can make sure you're seeing this okay. Whoa, that was a bit in your face. Right, so you've had your Gilden Flakes applied, um, so that gives that a kind of shiny finish. You can see the shadow of the second impression stamp there on the text and the other stamps as well on top of the text all layered. So it's just a wee journaling card or it's the centrepiece of a greeting card should you so desire. But that's it, that's basically stamp layering. Um, the next bit we move on to is a collage of images and of washi tape and then ultimately we will combine all of the things we've done. We'll combine stamps, we'll do combine collage and we'll combine uh, washi tapes and hopefully you'll find that interesting. So there you go, any questions give me a shout and I'll thank you all as usual for staying with me that's just to prove I'm still here. Uh, staying with me for watching, for thumbs up and if you thumbs up, and subscribing of course. And I shall see you all again hopefully tomorrow or the next day, or maybe after the weekend depending on how busy things are getting in here. Um, and we'll do some more work on collage and layering, or to make a collage. Right, so thanks very much for your time guys, I'll see you all soon. Bye!